Excuse me. You're gonna get a lot of attention. You ready? Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for uh, March 15th, 2018. Uh, let's all step, stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay, opening comments. Mr. Sorry. Taylor? Extremely proud, proud of the way the town handled themselves for the last three storms. Um, very, very difficult. Um, the fact we had eight or nine straight high tides that were high, high, high tides was awful. Uh, a few procedures I'm going to be working on to maybe work with the town administrator for the next potential storm. But very proud of the way the town handled themselves. Everyone did real well. Thank you. Richie. Yeah, I can't uh, thank the Public Works, Fire Department, Police Department, working around the clock uh, for back-to-back -back storms. Uh, the troops are tired, and they performed very, very well. If the plowing alone in the town of the Hive versus the other communities around us uh, is unbelievable. They did a fantastic job. And the fire department, as well as the police department, they're out and about, and they, their time to the average call when someone called 911 was right on the money. They were under two minutes. It was unbelievable. I was out there during the storm, and I saw them perform, and I tell you, it was just uh, proud. And Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move after this week and we start collecting our thoughts with the new town manager in effect. We need to do something for them. And talking with them, um, uh, they really don't want a party per se, but they would, would like something else. And I'll, I'll bring that up with the new uh, the acting town manager. And hopefully, because it involves money. I know we're shot on it, and, but uh, we'll see what we can do for these guys. They really, uh, they went above and beyond. <clears throat> of course, we get another storm Tuesday night. I just hope it's not any more high tides. At least the astronomical tides have gone away. It's been a very busy month, but uh, that's my report. I tell you, they, uh, uh, Bobby Dwyer and the chief uh, setting up the Red Cross up at Johnson School was excellent. And uh, the public works just performed. The number of people we have down the public works is just unbelievable. The job and the performance they, you know, with the 17 miles, 18 miles of roadway, they kept them clean and they, uh, and, and, and I tell you, you go to the surrounding communities, it's just, it's not, not happening, but the Hunt did an outstanding job. I'm very proud. So what I'd like to do is just, Hold on, I'll hold off on my motion until we have time to meet with the board and the new town manager so we can come up with something appropriate down the road for our uh, employees. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, and I will, uh, I'd also like to thank, I'd like to uh, particularly thank uh, some of the residents down on uh, Fox Hill Road, because I was down there setting up pumps with Timmy and the boys. Uh, Mike Shavinsky was one that uh, actually slept in his truck to, 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 keep, to make sure that the pumps stayed running. Um, uh, just all the, the residents down there, Marsha Duvall and, uh, and the, Frankie McCarthy and all those guys, they all came out, Chris Howard, and, and uh, we were able to get, get it pumped down. Uh, the DPW did a phenomenal job, as usual. Um, we were we were ready for it, and um, you know, we, considering we got we got beat up pretty good, um, we took you know they took care of it. They did a good job, great job. Police did, fire did, uh, so I'm I'm very happy with uh, 
<coughs> with the outcome. And we were able to pump stuff down, you know, pump the, the, the golf course down. And uh, now it's just a matter of uh, making repairs. So uh, cleaning up too. that's it. And also, I wanted to say, uh, I wanted to express my condolences to the uh, Tamajian families. Stevie passed away um, a couple of days ago, Steve Tamajian. And he was a great guy. He, he uh, was very involved with the Johnson School, him and his wife, Patty. Uh, they're long time in the hot residence, and um, we're going to miss him. He was just a great guy, so uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, may we appoint our new town? Yes, let's do the or minutes first. We'll do it. Well, I have something to say during the minutes. That oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right, so I would uh, entertain a motion that we appoint our new town administrator, Jerry Perry. Um, Jerry is. Uh, 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 was a Nahat police officer. He grew up in Nahat, right on Ward Road. Um, he comes from the Department of Revenue, where he was the, uh, the uh, Director of uh, Bureau of Accounts, Division of Local Services, and then he was the Deputy Commissioner of Local Services. Um, so he has quite a bit of knowledge about the budget and uh, what we're going through right now. As a matter of fact, thank God he came in and gave us some advice on this uh, one thing that we're going to be uh, voting on in a couple of minutes. Um, so I so entertain moved, that motion. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to support <clears throat> to appoint Jerry Perry as the interim town man administrator. Uh, I so move that, Mr. Chairman. T second had, had moved it, so T you want to second it? Well, he can second my motion. Okay. <laughs> Richie will second it. T. Discussion. Discussion. Well, I, I'm supposed to make the motion here, just here. All right, no. it's okay. No. Uh, the Bureau of Accounts, I'm reading right from uh, Mr. Perry's resume. The Bureau of Accounts oversees financial management of Massachusetts 351 cities and towns. He was in charge of setting the tax rate, compliance with Proposition 2.5, municipal accounting practices. Um, basically anything to do with any cities and towns. And the heart was one of them. So the people that ran the heart <coughs> reported to Mr. Perry. So I feel we're very fortunate to have him as interim town manager. Richie? Yeah, Jerry, I just, you know, I've known you my whole life. A Fox Hill kid, you know. So um, you've done extremely well in your employment history. You're a great asset to the heart when you were on the department of the police department. And now you're, you come, we've asked you to come and help us in, in your retirement, oh, and you've boy. agreed to do so. And uh, I appreciate very much, especially your expertise in the financial whereas. And especially when we're going through all this femur and all the information that we have to, you know, the, the uh, all the, memos and time and time sheets, everything has to be thrown in since the governor declared and the board of selectmen declared a state of emergency. And <clears throat> so it, it's, you're, you're just a, a welcome, a very, very welcome uh, asset to the town. And I appreciate very much uh, your step to the plate. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and so am I. And as a matter of fact, um, I will call the question. Uh, you know, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. So Jerry is the acting town administrator for the town of Hunt. And I'm glad that we did it now because now we can really put him to work. <laughs> Jerry? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, uh, to all three of you, thank you very much. Um, I will tell you, it's quite frankly an honor and a privilege to do this. I, I have a real uh, soft spot my, my, in my heart for the town of Nahant, as you all know. I grew up here. And by the way, it wasn't Wad Road, it was Castleway. I grew oh, up Castleway. Okay. <laughs> around the corner on Wad Road. But I did grow up there. Um, I, I, I've known all three of you for over four decades, quite frankly. And um, the fact that you asked me to do this, it is an honor and a privilege. Uh, I'm a big believer in public service. Um, and um, to do this, to come back to Nahant, and I'll tell you the truth, one of the main reasons I am doing this is uh, this community gave me an opportunity to begin in my professional career when I was on the police department, and 
hired a pretty young kid and even promoted me to be a sergeant as a pretty young guy. And I'm always grateful to the Board of Selectmen at that time, who happened to be uh, Jimmy Hosker, Bob Steves, and uh, Charlie Kelly at that time. Then Richie came shortly thereafter when I was still in the police department, but they gave me the opportunity to, uh, to broaden my career and, and to take it off, and, and I had a pretty decent run. And so for me to come back to Nahant and to try to help you folks out in the future is something I'm really looking forward to. I will tell you that one of my basic goals is to do as much as I can to provide stability during this transition phase to work with you guys. Uh, I can tell you I've had some preliminary meetings with a, quite a bit of the staff, and uh, you're very fortunate. There's a lot of talent in this community, and the staff are pretty good. And while I know there's a lot of challenges out there, I'm pretty confident not only will we we'll get through town meeting and get through some of these financial challenges we're facing, but uh, more importantly, I'm looking forward to working with the board to um, find your next permanent town administrator, which I think uh, the taxpayers and the citizens of the town deserve. So, again, thank you very much. Looking forward to working with you. And uh, as Enzo said, let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Um, next, uh, I would like to, uh, I entertain a motion, minutes, T? You wanna change them? No. Okay. If I may. Yep. At, at the last meeting, we had an unplugged audio system after Verizon came in and found it was unplugged. So I had some business that might have looked good, but nobody could hear it. Um, I made a motion to draft a letter of opposition to the chairman of the Board of Trustees and President of Northeastern. <coughs> an unanimous vote. Couple of problems. We didn't have a town administrator, and and our town council. I'm trying to reach him, so I'm going to meet with him to set up. It's not with the town administrator, but that's number one in the works. I also would like to have the town administrator look into this. I made a motion that the board of selectmen vote to have a 25 mile an hour speed limit from the cemetery all the way up to Swallow Cave Road. If you, if you people want to take a ride up through there, you'll notice there are no speed limit signs. It was a big deal a couple of years ago when I first came on the board because people speed in this town. And the chief did a great job. Uh, Castle Road and Fox Hill Road have new speed limit signs and the police are doing their best to stop people who are speeding. But, from like around the Han Associates all the way up through Swallows Cave Road, there are no speed limit signs. So I would like to have speed limit signs put up. It passed on a unanimous vote. And then third, I am going to meet with town council to set up a letter to send to the EPA requesting that they do an environmental compliance audit around the waters of Northeastern. Uh, 30 years ago, water started being pumped up there. Oh, it's not working. Oh, I did all that talking for nothing? Oh, boy. <laughs> they can hear it. Not as well? Okay. Uh, long and short of it is that I spent a lot of my youth up there at Pea Island in th that area, and I just want to know, and the t obviously the Board of Selectmen voted unanimously, the town would like to know what changes there have been up there at Northeastern since they've been pumping water into the ocean there for over 30 years. And there are no, there's no comparisons because nothing's been done up there. So I used to catch beautiful, beautiful black perch up there. There aren't any more perch up there. But anyway, so there were three things that we did that the town needed to hear because they couldn't hear. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'll entertain a motion that we uh, approve the minutes of 3118. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. But you, you have those are the minutes right there. Okay. You can sign them later. All right. Um, okay, next on the agenda is um, Citizens, uh, the Citizens Forum. Forum. This is the citizens' forum. This is when anybody can get up and speak. 
anybody wishes to. That, that microphone, and state your name and address, please. Sure. I'm going to read off the letter. My name is Dave Aldrich. I live at 163 Willow Road. And I'm representing 16 property owners, dear selectmen. This is a very preliminary but critical and urgent request from the entire neighborhood area of Willow, Summer, Christopher, and Wharf Street that continues to suffer from the wrath of the rising tide. <clears throat> we believe by all accounts from the Nahant Town officials and the DPW, the Willow and Summer Street intersection has the highest occurrence of consistently flooding area in the town. The winter storm flooding accompanied by snow, ice, rock, sand, and floating de debris create an impassable roadway that is dangerous with damaging results. Each occurrence, the three storm drains on Willow and Summer Street are blocked, <clears throat> resulting in damage and flooding. As you know, the drain systems are both clapper valves. So at the high tides, the pressure from the ocean does not allow for draining. But as soon as the tide recedes, the drains remain blocked with sand, rocks, and other debris. It is abundantly clear that the tide has risen and will continue to rise. Each current continues to damage our properties and compromise our foundations. The time for action we feel is now. The next event is right around the corner. We are requesting that the seawall or water abatement system be raised by three to four, three to three to four feet along Willow Road and continuing through the Aldrich property tying in to 8 Summer Street, which is the Massaro property. This elevation would reduce the volume of water over the walls, up the access ramp, which is on the Aldrich's property, and then directly through the 163 Willow Road with dramatic results. And that's the continuation of the water to Cadigan's and so on. <clears throat> The seawater damage during each storm will continue to adversely affect the, our physical properties, town access, property and real estate values, not to mention the reoccurring expenses to the maintenance uh, from the town. During each storm, we are all repeating, this is the worst case scenario, and Mother Nature continues to prove us wrong and challenge our resolve. The rising tides will worsen. All scientific data confirms that. Lifelong Nahant residents, one sitting here, will confirm that the recent storms have surpassed anything that they've experienced in the last 50 years. But this now occurs several times a year. The current storm with a prolonged surf and damaging through seven consecutive high tides flooding our area has now elevated our concerns. Thankfully, the power remained on during service. We cannot imagine how much additional damage would have occurred <clears throat> if uh, the power had gone off. We would like to reduce the extraordinary emotional and physical stress that we all face during these storms. We can no longer rely on our children as they have now moved from the hand and can't assist us. As we all age, we, cannot, we can't imagine how we'll be able to manage this in 10 years from now. And some owners winter in the south and they are completely helpless from afar. We, especially the Aldriches, know there isn't a foolproof way to prevent 100% of the seawater from breaching the walls. We accept living on the ocean and the floodplain exposes our properties, but if we can be proactive, avoid a penny-wise, pound-foolish, piecemeal approach, and reduce the volume of water by 75 to 85%, and 95% of the debris, that accompanies each flood by raising the seawall, we all feel that we've better prepared as humanly possible under the geographic location of our homes. A raised seawall water abatement system with adequate scuppers will be the best pr prevention possible. We feel a proactive approach and forward thinking strategy will alleviate long-term costs in, and maintain the quality of life that we all want in our neighborhood. We feel that the timing is perfect for this action. The declared disaster area will accelerate the process and the federal and state governments that are in a position for financial assistance. <clears throat> we urge you to submit additional pro this additional project as part of any FEMA or any other request that you will be requesting from the governor with his declaration of emergency and also to the government. 
An official letter signed by all parties is forthcoming, respectfully submitted on behalf of the neighborhood, Dave Aldrich. So I'll give you a copy of this, but I don't think anyone can really argue with what we're dealing with now. Um, you know, we, our property, we, we're at a higher elevation than, than the Cadigan, so we didn't have any water in our basement, but obviously our water looks, our yard looks pretty bad. Um, beginning with, um, with Linda and Chris and all the way down through the properties, um, it, it, it happens all the time now. And every single time, the town comes and the, you know, it's, it's more maintenance. You know, we, we, we have to often fill, open the, the, um, the uh, storm drains because, you know, we just do because if we don't, it doesn't get done because the town is very busy during the storms. So um, we feel that this is like, this is kind of a no brainer and everyone is behind it because if we can raise it up three to four feet, and we're, we're, my wife and I are perfectly fine with, you know, having an additional height of, of a lost view and property. That's perfectly fine with us. But we can't, you know, we can't, it's just a, this is kind of a nightmare. And now it's coming up the ramp, and this goes up the ramp, and then it continues down, and then it goes, you know, it, it go, as soon as enough of the, of the surge comes up, and it goes up Summer Street, and it hits Cadigan's house, and it goes down the driveway, then the whole area floods. So we really think that, and we all seriously want you to consider raising the seawall along Willow Road and figuring out a way, you know, we own the ramp that goes down to the beach. You know, we all, every, you know if you look at, if you're standing at the ramp, and you look at kind of like the last post, and you look at Massaro's wall, the la our seawall used to tie in all the way. I mean, John can attest to that from years past. So whether or not you have to move the access point for the beach cleaning, I don't know what to do, but we really do feel that this is a time that you have to raise the wall because it's just not gonna get any better and it's gonna continue to be a, a, an incredible burden on the town's expenses. And when this happens, it, it affects everyone. It affects the town real estate values. It, ex it affects people moving here because they come and they see this and they hear about it. So it's, it's really a win-win situation, we feel, and we really strongly hope you'll consider doing something for not only us, but for the town and everyone uh, in the area. So I don't know if you guys have anything you'd like to say or, all right, but I can tell you everyone Everyone is behind this, um, so. Um, I think the whole town's behind it. That uh, we all we have the same problem down at Fox Hill Road, and you know all around town. Um, but we. I, mean, I know. And, we're, and, num we're num we're like ground zero. And number the, uh, the those top layer of the seawall. If you notice the bottom of the seawall at, at, at Intuitive Beach really didn't get affected. Right. It's only the top because that's not really pinned in. And we're going to have to do something about that. We know that. Did you, did you want to speak also? John Anderson, 152 Willow Road. What Dave had mentioned, and what I feel too, as far as with the destruction that we saw in the cap along Tudor Beach and the rails being down, that is the perfect time as far as now to raise that wall three to four feet, as Lind had done on Lynchua Drive. I yeah. don't think any of the neighbors would... Uh, be angry. Uh, I think it would be a, uh, be a positive result within our neighborhood. I know I've been at this house now for 11 years, and when the w water comes down summer and into uh, the Cadigan's driveway and floods my backyard, especially the Cadigan's and Mike Tannen's, and then into uh, John Michaud's, over these past 11 years, I've seen the waters uh, get higher and higher and higher. Um, there's the drain that's in the, uh, between my property and the Henry's property, and I know that when the tides are high, uh, and I don't know that much about how the uh, piping goes, but seawater does come up through that drain and then starts flooding oh, the yeah. property. But I think, again, as Dave had said, this is the perfect time since the seawall now has been damaged, uh, is to uh, remove that, the railings, increase the, 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 uh, the height of the uh, um, seawall, and I think it would all benefit. Thank you.
All right. Um, May I? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I was born, brought up that area, um, Summer Street Court. Um, I can remember that place always flooding, but never like this. Um, never, as John would say, never. Um, there are certain areas, uh, Castle Road, Fox Hill Road, Ward Road, I would say they are one and you're one, both tied. This is terrible. I, I think, because I've been thinking about it, I went with Dennis all around town a couple of times, and I really think that we need to get procedures in place as selectmen immediately, because for next time we have to, you know, do the best we can immediately to help you people. But I think we should make a priority list with a new DPW, maybe the town administrator, on what really needs to be done in those areas are specifically done first and foremost. Because we have enough, we have enough coming in that we can do two or three areas at once. Uh, I was watching those waves. My daughter lives there now, and, and they were scary. Yeah. And if you went by Richie Lombard's house, that would be number one, too. So it's, it, it, there are certain areas that have to be immediate. Do three areas, four areas, whatever it is, all at once. Because we have to, it just, it's going to get worse. Is there anything that we can do, our, you know, our group can do to help you? Well, the town, town administrator is going to say a few things about a chapter and verse when we get to it. Um, but I, I think, well, you should be honest to make sure we do it. Because I, I want to push it. I want to make sure that this, we don't just put everyone in one spot. I want a bunch of spots done because if you went down a Fox Hill Road, you'd be, feel the same way as you feel. It, it, oh, understood. But I think it should be a three-pronged attack. This, is, this shouldn't be something that, oh, we'll worry about it next summer or something. So, you know, I, I'm with you 100% on this. We, we just... And, and an, another part, too, that I went to that should be added is uh, Bass Point Road. Unbelievable. They were hitting so hard that I was like, and this was by the fourth day. So I said, oof. So, I mean, but we, can, we can do that. If we get enough relief, we can, we have to. There's, there's no other way, we have to. So thank you for bringing that up. Well, thanks for listening to us. Yeah, we need to... Um Jerry take immediate steps with the public works. The number one is to uh, the drains there on Summer Street and Willow Road have to be completely cleaned right, right away before Tuesday's tide. They're doing it now. Uh, they, they, they need to get that machine and just pull the drain. Number two, they need to tip some Jersey barriers down there at the ramp and put like three or four of them to prevent the tide from coming up any further. And then on Willow Road, the wall, I agree with you 100%. We need a, we, you know, we've got the destruction of the upper tier and the, the, uh, the uh, fence completely taken down in one area and some other areas too. We need to raise that full uh, block. So take that fence down and what we need to do is raise that barrier at Willow Road, that whole area, and at the Modern Park as well. You can see that destruction down that area. That has to be refixed, re poured, and raised up. There is another storm drain that works. And Waff Street, too. Right. Just rain water. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the drains are working. That they're fine. <clears throat> no, 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 well, they haven't been. Well, the sand overfilled them, and we couldn't get to them quick enough. I know that. Because it's the same thing at the corner of Valley and Ocean, in front of, uh, and, and going down Willow, they were filled to the brim, the, the actual drains. And the water was coming down at the third house of Willow Road, right, you know, past me, and it was like a, just flooding all of Willow Road. 
But the big thing, that, th these, are, these are things we can address and get money to support that, okay? Um, and then down on Fox Hill Road and Castle Road, we need to build a seawall down there too, okay? The seawall all the way down from uh, the beach uh, by uh, Richie de Briggs' old house to the beginning of the sand dune in front of the old pharmacy on Doggy Beach. So it protects those people from the, that there. But the big thing that we need, to, and I've sent an appointment up with uh, Representative uh, Congress, we need, put, we need to put a, a barrier uh, from uh, Bailey's Hill over to the wharf. It's like very similar to uh, what the Winthrop barriers they put in. Now, in order to get that done, we, we got to talk to uh, Seth Moulton and the senators from the Massachusetts. We've got to get input and get them because from Florida to Maine, they're starting to build these new barriers and we've got to get our oar in the water to make sure that, because this is, you're talking millions of dollars. And one of the ways, you know, someone suggested to me and wrote to me that all the ships in the country, Navy, civilian ships, all have to have uh, double hulls, including the barges. They need to be double hull. And what they do and they plan on is sinking, say a barge, the barge is like three football fields long, fill it with rocks and just build the layer and the barrier up, tie it down, okay, and they do that. And then you have a barrier out at Tudor Beach, right along the water there. We've got ledge over by um, halfway <laughs> things that could tie it in and make it like a protected harbor. Now that's gonna cost billions of dollars to get it done, but they're doing it in Congress and they're starting to do it now. We need to step up to the plate. That will prevent all the flooding on Willow Road. Even with our barriers, okay? It's an idea and I, I like the idea and I, we gotta pursue it with our federal and state you know, officials because there's two areas that are getting flooded. Willow Road, <laughs> okay, water come down there. If you take a ride down Willow Road, you'll see it looks like Atatash with the rocks down there. I mean, it's so huge. I've never seen so many rocks in my whole life. Fox Hill, I've never seen so much water. I lived on Fox Hill. And, I, and I've never seen so much water in Fox Hill and lower end Fox Hill get flooded. We've got to meet with them down the road here, and we've got to come up with some uh, suggestion to prevent that from happening to those people. Those people were, were totally flooded. And uh, we can't have that again, so either we gotta you know, get more bu uh, pumps so we can put, down, put them down there in emergency before it starts flooding so they can flood the water. But we gotta meet with all those people. But these suggestions in there, we gotta meet down with the board. We got a brand new town administrator here, all right? And he knows the financial. And then, uh, you know, we need help, like you read about. And it has to come, the town of Nahant can't afford all this. We're lucky, lucky right now with the budget coming through. Um, <laughs> we have no money for raises, for instance, for the fire, police, and public works. We have none, no raises, no money in the budget for raises, and they deserve a raise. The price of milk has gone up in the last three years, and then right now we've got nothing scheduled for raises. So you can see how tight the budget is. And uh, plus we got a problem up in Northeast. You know, we got a major problem up there and that's gonna, uh, we're, gonna we're gonna be voting in the law firm tonight to go after these people. We can't allow them to expand their property up there. And 351 cities and town, the smallest town in the, the Commonwealth, and they're expanding it to add 300, 400, who knows? And that has to, that has to stop too. So we got a lot on our plate, but we, we're going to work through it. We've got the ideas, we've got the expertise, we know, okay, and we'll meet with you. We'll meet with you because I know when we had the hearing uh, for Northeastern, I have never met so many great people living in the town that I didn't know. And they're very, very smart. And they had some great, wonderful ideas and suggestions. We utilize that. The same with Willow Road and the you know, this is the perfect time. We gotta repair those walls anyways. It's a perfect time to take it up another layer. And the event goes right and go right around to 
in front of your property all the way down so that it's all enclaved. And then we'll block off that ramp so nothing gets up it. You know what I mean? So that, that's, the, that's the shortcut answer. Long term, we gotta build the, the breakwater out there to prevent it long term. Because that's where it's coming. These tides are not coming, you know. You can see, I mean, we used to have 30 yards of sand down at Shot Beach. Now it's, at high tide, it's right to the rocks. We have no, no beach at all. And two of the beaches the same way. So that's, okay, I, I hear you. We're gonna, we're working toward that. The Board of Slackman knows it. So we're gonna be, we're on top of it. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna hopefully keep, keep you apprised of the situation. Great. Okay? Fantastic. Okay. Um, okay, uh, I have a, a very good solution to, to most of this, and it's, it doesn't cost us a dime. Um, back in 2016, the governor, and I'm very familiar with this stuff because I, I, um, I had the maps changed in the hunt, as you know, last car committee did, FEMA committee. And it's still active, and we're working on the community rating system. But he signed um, the, the municipal vulnerability, vulnerability preparedness program. And basically, it's, uh, he signed Executive Order 569 instructing state government to, uh, to provide assistance to cities and towns to, to complete climate change vulnerability assessments and uh, resilience, uh, resiliency planning. Uh, the MVP grant program provides support for cities and towns. Massachusetts begin process of planning for resili resiliency. Uh, the state awards communities with funding to complete vulner uh, vulnerability assessments and develop action-oriented resiliency programs and plans. The, the, the program helps the communities to first define extreme weather and natural and climate related hazards identify existing and future uh, vulnerabilities and strengths, develop and pr uh, prioritize actions for the community, and identify opportunities to take action to reduce uh, risk and build resilience. So this is geared towards this. We'll get grant money for this. So maybe we can get you guys to come to uh, even jo join that committee to, uh, and we can work towards this you know, with the governor's office to do this. Uh, it's certified, MVP uh, certified providers are trained in workshops across the state to provide technical assistance to communities in corresponding and completing the assessment and resiliency plan using the CRBF, Community Resilience Building Framework. Towns and cities will then be able to choose the provider of their choice uh, from a list of providers. They'll come in, work with us, we look at Tudor Beach, we say we need to raise that wall, all right, three or four feet. The ramp's got to be fixed. It's going to go uh, around to Alessandro's <coughs> property, that, that whole area over there. Uh, Fox Hill Road, you know, there's, there's a seawall there that I, 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 was out, I was working those pumps down there on Fox Hill uh, during the, the, the flood in, on, in Lowlands. I, I helped set them up. There's a drain, and I'm sure Jerry's familiar with it, on uh, Castle Road that drains onto Doggy Beach, and we all thought that it was crushed, and it's not. We found the, the, the storm drain for it, and we started pumping over the wall um, uh, through, um, I think it's uh, Phil, um, Down by Wide Road. Yeah, yeah, that, that uh, what's his name's uh, old house? Uh, Phil Baldwin's old house. Phil Baldwin's old house, yeah. We, we set the pumps right over there, and um, that manhole kept filling up, so it still works. So, lo and behold, we went down on, I went down on Doggy Beach while the storm was going crazy, and there's rocks, there's boulders covering that, uh, the pipe. That's all that's wrong with it. And it's still connected, but it's just blocked up. Uh, and I'm sure you're having the same problem. We have the, 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 the um, Stevie Granice has won the contract to do the cleanup. He's already got guys out there now, uh, and I've been down checking them. Uh, they're doing all the catch basins now, because they're full of sand. Uh, they're doing uh, the revetment on the north side because uh, Marginal Road's falling down. Uh, Parrot Road, Fallon Way, they're all falling down. To the beach, that's going to be a little more complicated. So we'll get to that. We're going to get to that. But this, this program here, we need to implement this program and get grant money for this. They'll come in and they'll look at it, they'll assess it, they'll help us with it. 
And um, actually, uh, a friend of mine from DCR sent this to me today, Tony Barletta. She, you know, he sends me a lot of good stuff from, uh, he works with DCR, so um, we're gonna work on that too, all right? And maybe you guys can, I'll, I'll get a hold of you somehow. Sure, I mean, everyone's- uh, help, help us with it? Yeah, I mean, it's a great program, so, and it's, it's money. It's money for us to look at that and, and, and try to remedy it, you know? All right? Great. All right. Okay. <laughs> we, need, we need to sign someone in the town hall to, just for this project, just for this. Yeah. One of the secretaries in the office, administrator in the second's office, just to work on this recommendation being typed up. Okay. You know, okay. And let, get, let me look at. Get, I'll look at it, it yeah. and get it and ask not only the people here from Willow Road, uh, but from Fox Hill Road, Wad Road. Right. See, I when living down Fox Hill, the pipe that, that goes in back of next to Wad Road is the ditch. You know that well. The, prob <laughs> the problem, the ditch, it drained two ways. It was like this. It would drain toward Kelly Greens, and the other thing was it broke just be where the new pump station is, the major pump station. It was draining out to Doggy Beach. Problem with Doggy Beach, the sand dunes raised up. Raised. No, it's, it's the average. It's, it's covered with rocks. No, no, I know. It's, it's, you're, pumping the, the, you're pumping that drain next to Phil Baldwin's house. It's, it's beyond it. I, I saw it. Oh, okay. All they have to do is take the rocks away from it. Well, I'm just going to tell you, that sand dune down there just buried it. It's five feet, six feet high, so nothing is flowing back to it. So we have to re-dig that ditch. Yeah, Joe, okay, Joe, the great Joe, yeah. You're putting a great all. Joe Ward fit, did, built that in the 60s, and I think you're right, Richie. It's, it's getting it, it, the sand dunes raising. It's, it's across from the old drugstores, I recall. But we still need to build a seawall along that backside <sighs> those houses are, okay? Because the water is coming through that way, and we got to continue raising the sand dunes on Shot Beach because the water came that way as well. Right. Well, so, the dune, there is a dune project in place for... Shot uh, Beach. No, no, for um, uh, Castle Road. No, I understand, but... Along that pro that, and if dune, you the dune is going to... You need to build an actual seawall behind those no, to I prevent know. those people from there. But they have a dune project that, that they're supposed to be uh, authorizing. Also, if you notice that when you're leaving the hunt on the uh, Doggy Beach side, that dune is so high now, right. it, it really saved the hot road. No, 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 I understand the, that that's fine, but the problem behind <coughs> Castle Road, you've got all these homes, private yeah. homes, and uh, the money for those individuals to build a seawall <coughs> Is, uh, it's going to cost 150, 200,000. It's a lot of money. And those people down there, I, I would think, because I know at 78 on Willow Road, those walls all collapsed. And the granite was going through the back windows and the, and of the decks and taking up, come, coming through the front way. I saw it. I mean, I knew. I, you know. So um, it's great because those people that have the sea walls. On the private side of the Willow Road Beach and Tudor Beach, they're going to have to raise them. But in order to do that, that's a project. That's going to be, you know what I mean? You, you got to. That's a, that's engineering. That's us because the existing seawalls, the ones, most of them took a pretty good hit, but they didn't crack, and then there's no disturbance there. But one did. Oh, one did, yes. But um, we need to raise those two. They're going to have to get an authorization. Blanket authorization to raise those seawalls, and that's going to have to be a blanket one for all. That same with when we need go in front of the uh, appointing authorities to do that, you know, and and not have a, such a high fence. The fence along so uh, uh, Lungshore Drive, you know, it's about that high, but it's a big, thick, 18-inch wall, and it, it, it really does the trick. And those, if you look at them, they come in like this. They're kind of like a U-shape, and they, they stop and prevent the tide coming over. Yeah. Okay. That's what we need to do. So... Do you need us for anything else? Or? No. What, what's most important is that we stay on this, that, that we put together, a, under the town administrator, we put together a group that 
that decides the most important parts in town that need to be done together at the same time, however you want to say it, of which yours will definitely be one. You know what I mean? There'll be a lot of one, one, ones. It has to be done immediately, and then we can plan for the future. But this is something that's immediate, in my opinion. We need to get the names and the names of the houses that affected this time. No, right, right. And I know that there are bigger areas that you have to take care of, and, but I also want to know that you have been dealing with this problem for a very long time. Right. And it's getting worse. And, and you're getting much worse. It's getting worse all around town, though. Anybody in the velocity zone is, when you're in a, in a velocity zone, or below the velocity zone, you, you're going to, it's just, it's, it's what's happening. And, and right now, we have the 40 steps revetment we're dealing with. That, that's, that's a FEMA-funded uh, project that DEP is um, denying us uh, a, 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 the hard order of conditions for, and we're, we're working on that. Um, this, this program here, I'm going to be looking for people for this. This is a really, really good program. This is going to say, you know, this, you're going to, you'll have your input, all right, on this. Uh, the people will have their input. Um, we'll get grant money to, to, to put a plan together, and then we look for funding. You know, we'll look if for, you could develop a list of all the people involved I, down there. And I know some people the names, down The names, the addresses, if you could, you know, the 14 residents, that would be good. Helpful, give it to the town manager. And so that, you know, which, this, like the same with Willow Road, we're going to start farming that up too. Don't worry, everyone is it's very anxious. Board. Everyone's very anxious about and, this. And do we reach out to our farmers for that? Because we'll be right down and we'll follow up with you. Well, we're going to keep going on this. It's probably going to be on the agenda every two weeks. So we know exactly, and give you upgrades, say, okay, this is what happened from the federal government, the state government. We're going to solicit and go ask for the funds. Okay, so there's a state of emergency, and then uh, uh, Mr. Perry, who's the new town administrator, is very good at financial stuff, so he, he's, he knows all about that. And hopefully, uh, and then we've got to go to Washington and get that breakwater. You know, we might have to put a breakwater. I mean, the, the town, we need, just like Winthrop did. Winthrop, if you look on Winthrop, those breakwaters stop, okay, the uh, tide surge. Okay. Also, also, guys, no offense, but people cannot hear you out in town unless you speak up at the mic. Just right. So they don't know what we're even answering to. But it's all about they care. Yeah, you got to get up and talk because they, they want to, you know, the cameras, we get cameras both ways and but they, they want to hear and see, you know. <coughs> we know. Last people year, we were, couldn't, they couldn't hear us and it was, the phone were, was ringing off the hook. They were unplugged, so. Well, we're the most important people in the world, so. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you. Yep, thank I'm going to be calling you guys tomorrow okay. for this. Um, Thanks thank for coming. You very much. Thank, you. thank you. One last thing as far as so, uh, please reach out. I'll, I'll give you my name and number. I emailed you so you have all my contact information so we can get moving on this. Okay, sure. That's great. Yeah, that, yeah that's really great. appreciate I mean, it. I, I, thank I, you very listen, much. Yeah, the more the merrier. You know, I, 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 and like I told you, I'm working on the community rating system, and I'm, I've kind of fall, fallen behind because um, we have the, with the committee, it, it's a ton of work. And this, this, if I can integrate more people into that, it's, it's going to help your flood insurance rates get down too. Right, so, right. you know, this is all, all helpful. This is, it's about time that you know the governor did something like this. So. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Up. Okay. The interim town administrator report. Jerry, you want to speak on the emergency spending? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you have before you uh, actually a, a letter. There is a letter right here. I'm sorry. Um, let me explain a little bit how Chapter 44, Section 31 works. Um, it's it's an accounting emergency. It's not so much the fact. I mean, the fact there was an emergency. That's a little bit different here. But what occurs here is uh, the town in emergency situations by law can incur liabilities, which is fine. You don't have to wait to get to town meeting or anything like that. You just go clean up, you do bidding, which we did with Grenice and things of that nature. That's all fine. Under Chapter 44, th Section 31, uh, you need to vote a vote of the board tonight to approve that, requesting that the director of accounts, which is my old job, um, allows the town to pay the bills. 
So you can incur a liability in an emergency situation, but you have no statutory authority to pay the bills. When By uh, voting this tonight, uh, the town can pay those bills to Granice or whoever, you know, wherever they, when the bills come in. And then what happens, what we're going to have to do is um, we, we kind of start adding up all the bills and see how much uh, the liability is. You don't have money in place for this right now. And what we can do, and we'll, uh, we'll go to the bond market before June 30th, is uh, we will determine how much the liability is. We will go out and borrow for these funds. And we can borrow from anywhere from two, it used to be two years, they just recently changed it up to 10 years now that the town could vote to borrow for these uh, things. And then what happens, it's called bond anticipation notes. You, you, it's kind of like temporary notes. And what happens is we, we wait to uh, reconcile with FEMA, MEMA, insurance, et cetera. And then when we pay off the liabilities from any reimbursements the town may receive after we find out what our liabilities are, then we have whatever's money left over. Then we have to make a determination how we're going to pay those bills. And, and it could be as much as a year or two out the road. By doing this, uh, it takes the liability off the setting of the tax rate so we can get your tax rate set this summer or early fall. And uh, it's, try, quite frankly, the proposed way that most communities in the Commonwealth handle when these uh, storms and hurricanes and tornadoes and fires and things of that nature. So this is standard practice. This is how we will handle it. But it will probably take a year and a half, two years before we finalize uh, you know, all of this and make a determination down the road how to pay the residual funds left over from any reimbursements. So I would recommend to the board, uh, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions, but I would recommend that the board unanimously uh, pass this and I will get the letter to the Revenue Department first thing tomorrow morning. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve under the guidelines of Chapter 44, Section 31 of MGL, the deficient expenditure, liability, and excessive appropriation of an amount yet to be determined for removal of storm-related debris, emergency repairs, and other needs of the community related to the storm. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? Any discussion? Go no. On. I like it. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I move the Board of Selectmen vote to declare an emergency situation due to the March 2nd, 2018 storm and resulting damage. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I can do this one, Jerry, if you want. Okay, the, the field, field day? Which one's on, that? It's on the agenda. Okay, uh, there's a, we're going to approve a field day, Johnson School PTO 6-12-18 from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is when the kids, uh, the sixth grade, I think, have their field day down there. The graduating class. From I so move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, okay, old business. Uh, FY uh, 2019 budget uh, review continued. Um, I've talked with. Oh, go ahead. You want to talk? Oh no, no when you're done, I, I would like to. Uh, you want to talk about it? Sure, go ahead. The budget in general, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you okay with that? Okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. As Enzo knows, and I think T a little bit too, um, we have tried since we started this marriage. Um, to try to take a look at the budget. I spent some time um, last week with Debbie Waters uh, going over the budget a little bit. I plan on meeting her, with her again tomorrow morning. I had the privilege of sitting with Brendan Ward over the weekend and discussing the budget uh, with the chair of the uh, Advisory Finance Committee. And I have on my own spent some considerable amount of time looking at not the weeds of the budget, but the bigger picture. And I think it's important that I begin this dialogue with you. Uh, I appreciate Richie's comments about the fact he thinks I'm uh, some sort of a, a knowledgeable guy on, on municipal finance. Uh, I like to think I know a little bit about it, but, but I have to say this to the board and it's kind of to the town as a whole. It's my opinion that we will probably balance this budget this year at town meeting. I think we can do it. However, it's gonna require a large infusion of free cash to balance the budget, okay? And in the, it could be seven eight hundred thousand dollars. The last word I got was seven seventeen, but we still got to deal with the, the recent snowstorm and 
and anything else. There is some hope that we can uh, take some funds, unexpended funds that may be left over in some of the accounts and do the transfer shuffle that most communities do. But on a larger scale, and I even, uh, and Richie and I talked a little bit about this, is the long-term effects of the budget and how uh, the future looks for the town of Nahant. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be here for this, but I think the time has come to have a pretty tough conversation. Uh, quite frankly, uh, it's my professional opinion that, you know, kind of a structural deficit, if you will. I wouldn't call it a deficit per se, but it's, it, we're out of whack probably half a million dollars. Not that you're out of whack per se, but, but traditionally the utilization of free cash is not really supposed to be used for day-to-day -day operations. It's supposed to be used for one-time expenditures. Northeastern attorneys, uh, storm damage, um, uh, capital infrastructure costs, things of that nature. That's the right approach to use free cash, which uh, good, you know, the strong communities do that. Um, the rating agencies look at that pretty strongly. And um, unfortunately, I know over the last several years, and, and even before I retired, I had long conversations with prior town administrators, even conversations going back to Mark Cullinan about the utilization of free cash, which I know you've all talked about in the past. But there are other communities from my professional experience that got themselves in the trouble going forward. There is no other solution this year. It's not like, you know, I, I have some, uh, you know, great ideas to get you there. But what I'm worried about is either next year or two years down the road. Because the, you are running the risk of going into getting in the trouble to the point you're not going to have balanced budgets. And um, you may not be able to set your tax rate, which happened, uh, I think Richie can attest to this a little bit back even before Mark was here uh, way back in the day there. Having said that, it is my opinion upon looking upon this, I don't believe you have an expenditure problem. I've looked at that, and I, I even thought back to when I was here 35, 40 years ago when I was working here, you've got the same size fire department, you've got one more cop, you've got a few more people in the town hall, you even have less people down in the public works. You've done a great job as a, as a community when you talk regionalization, the way you've interacted with the town of Swampskid and the educational uh, costs here in terms of uh, contracting out with them, because um, normally school systems incorporate about 50% of any budget. I do not believe you have an expenditure problem. I think the town leadership going back many years has done a great job, and people think uh, you're spending too much money here, there. That's not really the case here, not on the operations. I believe the problem is on the revenue side. Um, I looked at your average single family tax bill. Uh, in 2009, you uh, ranked, I think, 60, bear with me here. In 2009, you, uh, the average single family tax bill was $5,215, and you ranked 63rd in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and almost all those communities are inside the 495 belt. However, in FY8, in FY17, the most recent year, your average single family tax bill was 62.93, and you, you rose to uh, 81st. So what's happened is you, the town, is, I'm, not, you know, I'm not advocating you raise taxes or anything like that, but people, I think, get the misimpression that we're, we're spending too much money. I do not believe that's the case here in the Hunt. It's just that you have a relatively low tax base. There are challenges that come along with things like uh, pension costs, health care costs beyond your control. These are beyond the controls of, of this Board of Selectmen or me or anybody else. You, you get collective bargaining issues. Um, you get OPEP-related costs. There's a whole bunch of things there. Um, I think the town should be commended for what it's done uh, on the expenditure side. But I think the time has come, and I did have a conversation with the chair of the, Pro uh, the advisory and finance committee who does agree with me on this a little bit too, the fact that um, I think going forward over the next year or so after we get through town meeting, we need to have a conversation because I am concerned about next year or maybe two years out. You've seen other communities pretty close by go through a very similar exercise where they use their free cash and got in a lot of trouble and uh, I'm worried about how this could impact this community going forward. So having said that, I just think it's important being pretty brand new here to you guys that that be said right up front, but I do believe we can get you a balanced budget through town meeting this year. It's the future we have to be worried about. Thank you. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you may have Thanks. about it. Thanks, Jerry. Um, I, I agree it is a revenue uh, issue. Um, I, I do agree with you with that. And we, we do have to do something about that. We have um, free cash. I mean, every, every selectman seminar I've gone to, uh, I've actually talked to the guy that you that took your place. Uh, and 
we just keep spending and spending and spending. We, ac we actually had an extra $400,000 in free cash this year due to tax title stuff. And you know, if we didn't have it, we'd be in trouble. We we'd be in real trouble. And it just seems like that we get lucky every, you know, every, every time we run into these problems, we get lucky. And our luck's gonna run out. I don't disagree with that. Um, <coughs> you know, we, we have to just, the, the, the whole free cash issue is, is, being, is becoming a real problem. We should be putting money away, but we should be using it, like you said, for yeah. one-time expenses. And I, I'm glad, I, I don't mean to interrupt, Mr. Chairman, but, but you know, I mean, we have about $90,000 in stabilization. You have 20000 30, 30000 in OPEB. Right. I mean, your goal, and I know you just can't get there yet. You're not ready for it. The goal in stabilization is 10% of your general fund. Uh, you're, you're at 8.6 million, so you really want about 800,000 in stabilization. You're not even close to it. The OPEB trust fund is falling behind too. And, and this is future, I, I, I was listening to Richie talk about those seawalls and, and, and I apologize. The first thing in my head is how are we gonna pay for all this stuff, you know, and I get nervous, but, no, no. but and it's a legitimate, I mean, need. There's no question to that. But the fiduciary position of the town is precarious right now. And, and even, you know, dealing with collective bargaining and things of that nature, it's important that the taxpayers of this town know it's just not an, exp I don't believe it's an expenditure. You're kind of providing the same services you did 40 years ago. Right. You really are. And that's a right. testament to keep, keeping your thumb on, the, on that side of the, the coin. It's, it's, the, it's the revenues. Right. That's where the problem lies. And we have to be careful with that. You know, oh, I you know, totally we, we don't want, you know, uh, you know, a tough I, conversation. I don't want another swamp, Scott. And I like swamp. Oh, know, I agree. They, they have too, they have They're too way, high. They, yeah, way too high. <laughs> Trust me. Um, and we are going to have some issues coming up. So we have water and sewer coming up. We have, uh, and that's, and, and people really have to, I know everybody's focus is on Northeastern, but they really need to, and I'll email them that whole, that whole plan. Um, if they ask, uh, I'm more than happy to do that, make it available. <coughs> but they really need to start thinking about that because town meeting is a, a month away, and that's going to that's going to be on the plate. That yeah. whole water and sewer issue. The um, just again, the, the, the we we need to we need to look at everything, you know, financially in the town. I am concerned as your brand new right. interim town administrator. I'm just concerned and. I can't tell you in my prior life how many communities I had to go in and do some really nasty things because there wasn't enough money. I think even Mr. Taylor knows a little bit about this from his professional career too, and we don't want that to happen here. And um, it's gonna be some really tough stuff going forward. I just, it's something I think needs to be said right out of the blocks my first night, and I apologize to everyone for having to talk about this, but I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't bring this to the table tonight. Right. And you know the debt service. The, the, we, we're paying. We, we've. Uh, I think we've collected probably close to a million dollars in rent at uh, at the Coast Guard housing, and we've paid two hundred thousand dollars off on the debt. And that, to me, is shameful. And we, we're balancing the budget with that with the, with the Coast Guard housing. Uh, we, we're paying interest only. It, we're still struggling with that whole thing. Uh, and as a matter of fact, um, if you don't mind, I, I want to make a. Uh, I would entertain a motion that Wayne Wilson would like to be a, a part of that committee. So I would entertain a motion that we <coughs> send Wayne Wilson tonight because they are having trouble getting quorums. Coast Guard Housing? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. I'll so move. Do I have a second? How many people are you missing? Well, we're not. We're not missing anybody, but they need to. Wayne has some good insight. Thank He's you. a building inspector. So he, he, can, he can tell them, he can guide them too, you know. And I, for some reason, we should have probably put him on there a long time ago. So. Do I have a second? Yeah, thanks. Okay. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So Wayne's on the, the, that, that committee. I'm going to let him know tomorrow so he can start going to those meetings. But again, that, that's, that's another issue uh, that, you know, we just keep spending money that we don't, we're depending on that. We're depending on the golf course to pay our bills. Uh, we depend on all these things to pay our bills, and it's just, we shouldn't be doing that. They so. call it uh, kicking the can down the road, and that's right. what's going on right now in this community. Not that it's anyone's fault, but the laws of Proposition 2 and a half are really hand, handcuffing the three of you and the town as a whole in terms of how to, uh, you know, raise the revenue, because there's only so much you can raise. Right. And it's limited, and, and 
you could literally eliminate an entire public safety department and probably just break even. That's how bad it is going forward. It's a structural problem, and, and it's going to rear its ugly head in the next few years if we don't talk or do something about it. Thank you for that. All right, Sheriff. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next is the Capital Plan Community Preservation Committee. Um, just review it. Just a review. It's uh, the exterior building envelope maintenance. <coughs> Town Hall is getting uh, for fifty thousand. Library twenty five thousand. The chapel twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. The ADAC a a access to the town hall is fifty thousand because they got to fix the ramp out there and put the uh, probably an elevator up here or something somewhere. Um, the gangway replacement, the the, uh, the hot for the harbor master, and the Nahant Preservation Trust Valley Road School walkway replacement is tw uh, twenty thousand, and the Nahant Historical Society archival catalog and training eighty five hundred. Um, Okay. The warrant. The warrant is next. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to set the warrant for FY19 annual town meeting. Second. Okay. Um, discussion? No. We might have a couple more to go on there, so we, we may be opening it up um, again. Article 34 has been taken off the marijuana consumption article. It's been removed. Uh, I had Mike Feinberg, the Chief Feinberg, send the, the uh, Article 38 and 39, the sprinkler systems, to um, to Jerry. I had him send that to Jerry, and I had him also send it to uh, 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 the, the, the Finance Committee, because they're the ones that actually get up and read it and re have to recommend it. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So the motion carries. We may be opening this back up. Sure. Next week. All right. But may I say something? Sure. The um, the fact that we have different areas of the town that really need to be looked at, and the people came up for to the beach. And I've had plenty of conversations with the Fox Hill, Castle, Ward Road people. Um, each area is very, very important. I think that all of the checklist and whatever's done should be run through the town administrator, through his office. He, uh, my thought was that he get together with the directors, police, fire, public works, and a Dennis Ball type person, yep. and, and get a list of things that need to be done, and then he, he spearheads it as town administrator. Uh, I, 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 I believe that's really important. Then we don't have um, everybody running different. No, I, I, I and I, I understand that too. But he's new. I mean, Jer Jerry's just just in here, and, and um, but he's also good. I understand oh. that. But we've worked. How's we, that, you Perry? Know, I've, I've worked with these people uh, with FEMA. I've worked with. Um, oh, understood. But so it's still run through the town administration. Absolutely. I mean, he'll he'll get all the information, but. I still want to, uh, you know. Oh, absolutely. This has to this has to work this way, and you know, um, I'm not going to overburden him right now. He needs to get us through town meeting first. So, and this this stuff has has come up. Um, I'm very well versed in it. That's that's what I do. I mean, if and I can always give it to him, uh, you know, pass it off to him. Well, I I want the town administrator in the loop. Oh, absolutely. Okay. He's supposed to be. <laughs> that's Thank his you. job. Thank you. Um, Okay. Yes. Do we have set, have we set up an informational hearing on FEMA yet for the, for the citizens of the town to come up here with their you know fill out the forms so they can apply for low interest loans to fix their property? Not yet. They're, they're coming in Monday at around one, I believe. It's MEMA and FEMA, and we're gonna we're, I'll speak with them. Um, I'm gonna go around with Dennis. They gonna do it Monday. Or? Monday during the day, yeah. So I'll, I'll go no, but around. They, they need to bring in people to assist them. And, you know, tables and chairs for people can sit down and help fill out the forms. No, not, they, we, haven't met, we haven't reached that point yet. We haven't done that yet. No. I don't think uh, that's coming. I, th I right. agree with you, but I think it's a little premature, Rich. I, right. I think 
that the, 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 the FEMA and MEMA are not ready for that, but they will be eventually, I think. And Believe I'll, me, they, they, I'll look they, into that. they're still in Florida. <laughs> yeah, I, I, they're, they're, still a, they're still assessing costs. It's, it, we're not, they're not, they're not, you're right, but we're not there yet. A little, little early in the game. You know, the adjusters, this is public adjusters are up from Florida, and then they went to New Orleans, and now they're here. Okay. In the hot. Yes. They're, they're, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll get to it. I mean, FEMA is, they work slow. I think we need to do is uh, get a timetable maybe and just to let everyone know out there that it's not set up yet, but yeah. it's coming. And oh, yeah. We'll keep you yeah. apprised of it. Yep. So that they, there's an informational. There's people a little... You know, they're asking the questions, yeah. and I don't know the answers. So. I, let, I can help you a little bit with that. I, I did a lot of work with MEMA in, in, over in the west part of the state, quite frankly, uh, with ice storms and things. We're talking a three- to five-month lag by the time they catch up to do just what you're looking to do. So the storm occurred, what, a couple weeks ago, whenever it was, and so you're probably talking summertime maybe at the earliest. Uh, where, you know, it's just their timetable, right. the way they do things. See, the problem so. is we have 1,300 homes in the town. Right. And mostly these, probably 20% that were affected by the storm. Is that what you asked? I don't even know that myself. That's what you think? Okay. okay. Might be more, you know, a okay. few plus amount of, Yep. But I, these people are kind of, you know, they lost yep. a lot of things, the walls, and see. They're losing their um, rocks, giant rocks that they yep. paid thousands of dollars, lost 668, 70, you know, the major storms. Right against their property and now they're washed out the sea now they got to replace those and it's going to cost right they got to get permission of, from the concom conservation commission yes yep. permits, but i mean these things are all have to be you know, it's going to take some time yeah well just, they have uh, they have till april 2nd they, they can file an emergency notice uh and they really don't have to get approval they just have to let the concom know what they're doing yeah, up until see, april 2nd okay, that's my that's, question is right. where do they get the phone Right online, right, 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 online. You know, right no, online, or they can get a hold of the CONCOM and just send that to them. As far as FEMA, I, I'm, I, I, I'm in touch with FEMA quite a bit, so I will call Chris Marcus, that's my friend at FEMA, and ask him when he thinks they'll be out here. Sure. All right. have people come up I'll here have so get, phone phone. Huh? They're very, <laughs> do, you, do you know anybody at the, in, in the FEMA office? FEMA, no, MEMA, yes. Yeah, MEMA, well, let's stay, but FEMA is like... Don't have a... Uh, I did a lot of a lot of work with MEMA. Yeah. So maybe uh, well, you and I are going to get together tomorrow on yeah, a few we'll issues. We'll so together. we'll uh, collaborate. Let me. Uh, there's no question, Richie. We got to do that for the town. So it's right. going to be done. A lot of, I mean, there's a lot going on. Everybody's right very now. anxious because. Yeah. You know, should I have it repaired now? Save the bills and then the problem? Right. You know what I mean? These are the questions I right. think need to be answered. And well, I'm sure that that the, maybe there's a we can put up a website where they can ask the questions and we can get back to them. Uh, somebody, somebody, get back to them. The most important thing they can do is take pictures. Oh no, I understand. They have to have proof. Contact their personal insurance for openers, right. anyways. Yeah. Right. Take pictures. Right. I mean, seawalls are not covered under flood insurance. Right. Uh, flood insurance basically covers almost collapse of building, <laughs> pretty much. Right. You know, some some contents. Yeah, but the max on the flood insurance is two hundred fifty thousand. Right. But so, no one, even the ones in New Jersey, that lost the complete house. They never got paid anywhere near 250000 yeah, Some of them didn't even get paid. No, and, and, so. So, and they're still waiting for it. Right. So it's like, you know. And the thing, I, I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I was here for the blizzard of 78, and, um, you know, the federal government was pretty generous. We had fire trucks. We got all kinds of things. Oh, no, no. We, we, Those we general. Got, yeah. The, well, we, but, we, the state came through with us. Uh, there was a lot of money back then, but. Jimmy the, Hoska helped Oh, us. yeah. I'm, I was, I remember all of that. Um, yeah, no, Jimmy However. What I wanted to say. I was on the FinCon when they were right, right. Yeah. But it's it's a lot tighter today. Money is not as plentiful today well, as it was back 40 years ago. So I don't want people to think we're going to get all the you know it's, oh, it's no, 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 the no, challenge no. is tremendous compared to what it was years we ago. We have to reconfigure our numbers. Right. right. It's going to be budget. tough. And reconfigure, you know. Uh, there could be the question of regionalization yeah. down the road here. Well, that's a it, that's you know. a big thing, big word. But I mean, we can't afford where we're going. No, you can't. Well, let me put it this way: you can't under the existing revenue, revenue structure. Approach. But again, I, you, you talk regionalization. You've got to take a bow, you guys. I mean this sincerely. Oh, we gotta, With the school, the way you handle the school issues here and the school costs is, 
you've done a great job on the financial side. You really have, and I'm, I'm saying that publicly here. Um, we we could do other things too. Great but administrated on there now. Yeah, I heard that. I'm, I'm, I will make it a point to reach out to uh, to him. But um, the regionalization stuff, Richard, you've been you've been here the longest, so you know you guys have done a good job and and coordinated with Swampskin well, and everything. We've worked but, with less, you know. That public right. works used to have 12 to 13, 14 people. Right. And now but, we're down to five, I believe. Right. And now there's, uh, they. I filled in over the storms with some... I'm amazed that you're running this town with the, the, the public work staff you do. And I, I haven't met them all yet. I mean, they've got to be great people. These guys worked around they got to the be working their tails off here because I when I was around, it was like three times the size of the, the, the I can't people. I can tell you how there. tired they were. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, I they imagine. were exhausted. And, 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 and I'll be God, reaching out to them. Thank God uh, for people like Michael Callahan feeding them. And oh, feeding the oh, people, okay, down the tide and, okay. and the and the pizza store. Yeah, I mean these guys, they you know they just they ate in their trucks. That's you know. I think the town's very fortunate with what you're getting for the services oh, from the I people. Know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just coming back here after a long time. And the fire department and the police department, they work around the clock. Okay. Okay. Closing okay. announcements. Uh, Charles Kelly Scholarship <coughs> is due four six eighteen. See this website or go come to the town hall for information on it. Uh, it's a thousand dollar annual Charles Kelly scholarship, and it's uh, the instructions will be up here or on the website what, what they have to do to, to uh, acquire it. And then they have the uh, Hunt Veterans Association scholarship on the 41318 is, is due. That's another scholarship that's available, and I believe this American tomorrow, Legion. Is that the American Legion one? Yeah, 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 yep. Five hundred dollar annual American Legion yep. scholarship. Yeah, the, the Hunt Veterans Association, NVA. So, and then also uh, tomorrow night is uh, no Saturday night is the St. Patrick's Day. They can buy tickets to uh, down uh, yes. at the Coast Guard Station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we cleared that whole area, so it looks yeah, pretty good. Was, yeah, yeah. Then, I had uh, the DPW went down there today. Oh, so, that's it. Um, Anything else, gentlemen? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. We're adjourned. Pedro, we're done. Thank you, Pedro.